So I was thinking recently about, you know, the struggle of painting outside in the winter. Not only are you freezing, but your watercolors or gouache, the water you use to paint with, can freeze. You can use alcohol to get around that. The other side of it is it takes so long for the paint to dry. When I paint outside in the winter, I often have to change how I paint. So rather than using three or four layers, like usual, I would only use one and it would be a lot less finished. <laughs> but I was recently organizing my studio and found my bag of uh, water soluble colored pencils. These are the Albrecht Dürer, probably mispronouncing that, Faber Castell. They are water soluble, meaning you can draw with them and then get them wet and they, can, they turn into watercolor. So I have all my little swatch cards and I thought I would pick out some wintry colors and get into the water soluble colored pencil mindset. <laughs> the fun thing about this kind of material is that it combines my two favorite things, drawing and painting. And there are so many different ways you can use these pencils. I have barely scratched the surface, I think, with you know, understanding the techniques. I know how to draw and I know how to paint. So it should make sense, right? It should be, it should come naturally. Uh, but there's always little nuances, little things about new materials that can catch you off guard or that you just have to get used to. And if I eventually feel brave enough to face the bitter cold <laughs> and paint outside, I think I'm going to take these with me. Uh, so yeah, it's time to remind myself how to use them. Oh, and by the way, it did finally snow here. Check it out. My two favorite brushes to use on the go when you know I'm using the water soluble pencils outside or somewhere else are these water brushes. This one is the Pentel. It has a very fine synthetic tip. It's really nice for fine details. And this one is the Caran d'Ache. There's a couple different sizes. The cool thing about this one is that you can press this button while you're painting so you can hold it down on both sides and it lets the water flow through. When I'm selecting my colors, I'm imagining what are the minimal amount of colors I need to achieve my goal. I like to blend and layer colors and I don't need every single color under the sun. In this case, I'm painting snowy scenes, so I'm going for more muted earthy tones as well as lots of blues and cool tones. In this video, I thought it would be good to share my top three tips for using watercolor pencils to create landscapes. And keep in mind that I'm trying to use as little water as I can to achieve my desired results, because the goal is to be able to paint with very little water so that it dries much faster outside in cold, humid temperatures. So my first tip is that it really helps to brush in the direction of the object. In this case, I'm painting trees, so vertical. And when I start painting the shadows, I will move my brush horizontally. I find that the second you water down the pigment and it starts sinking into the paper, it's staying in place. So in a way, it's kind of like a shorthand version of trees. These clusters of trees in the distance are just quick little vertical marks. And in the end, they dry in a way that looks like misty soft trees growing upwards. And the shadows on the ground over the snow are falling every which way, but mostly horizontal. My second tip is that you actually need much less water than you might think you do. And as soon as you add water to the pigment on the paper, it's going to dilute it a ton and get very, very light. 
So if you're going for more intense color, you're going to want to lay down more pigment or get the paper wet first and start drawing on the wet paper because that actually creates the most intense color. So what I do is start with a very watery wash and let that sink in for a second and then I start drawing on top of it which is going to soften the pigment in the pencil and release it onto the paper really strongly. Then you can come back with a brush and soften it and move it around a bit but for the most part it's kind of staying in place. And lastly my tip is to embrace the drawing or illustrative effects you can create especially because I'm using cold press paper it has a ton of texture to it when I draw on the surface the paint is released onto the page in kind of a rough way it looks a little bit rough so my lines look like pencil lines and I actually like that look on top of the softness I created in the background it just feels like more of an illustration so rather than try to fight it and soften every single mark I embrace it and I use that to my advantage so maybe when I'm painting or drawing the bark on I'll leave it looking a little bit rough I won't try to over soften it if you're interested in learning exactly how I painted this scene with step-by-step -step instruction, I just uploaded that tutorial to my Patreon in the bonus tutorial tier. And I also have another watercolor pencil tutorial from a long time ago on Patreon that I'll also link to in the description. Okay, I really feel like using a little more color, so let's do something a little different. I find this process to be incredibly relaxing and kind of magical because I'm laying down pigment that I can actually barely see and there's especially no detail in the first layer. It's just a promise to my future self that these colors will work out. And then as soon as I touch it with water, things start to happen. The scene comes alive. And it feels like I have suddenly cast a spell on the page and it's a snowy landscape. I think part of this freedom that happens on the page comes from my experience with drawing. Drawing has always been the one most direct way to connect with my imagination. So when I sit down to use these watercolor pencils, I very much approach it from a drawing mindset at first. Of course, I'm thinking about how the colors will appear once they're wet, 
but it's just the act of holding a pencil and moving it across the paper that sort of helps me tap into maybe it's muscle memory of accessing that free flow feeling that I always have when I'm drawing. In a way, this is kind of like spontaneous painting, painting without a sketch. Although I am starting with pencil, the first layer or two is just really abstract. It's just I'm laying down some pigment on the page with a general idea of what's going to happen once it gets wet. So I actually find so much value in doing these little scenes in helping me to hone in on my visualization skills and trusting in myself, knowing that no matter what happens on the paper, I'll make it work. If you want to give this a try, I recommend doing a backlit scene because the background's going to be bright, maybe you'll use some warmer tones, and things that are in the foreground are mostly silhouetted. So you'll have some darker trees or grasses, and you don't have to worry about saving the brightness of the paper for those, you know, preserving your highlights like normal watercolor. I think backlit scenes are much easier to improvise. <laughs> 